What's up guys, welcome to this new video. In this video I want to break down three of my, uh, my recent guillotine finishes. And it's going to be three finishes that I set up from very different positions. The first one is from a boat standing position. The next one we're going to look at is from a passing position. So I'm playing top game, I use the guillotine to pass a guard. And the last one is one we already broke down, I'll put a link in one of the corners. Um, which is about uh, doing the guillotine from bottom and turning it into a triangle. We'll look mainly at the setups in this video. Um, as always, uh, when I talk about guillotines, there's a lot more uh, information and knowledge about this in my instructional and the link is uh, right in the description below. But um, let's take a look at these three different guillotine setups and three different finishes. Let's start with this uh, setup I did from uh, boat standing. My opponent shot in for a double leg from there. I catch the guillotine and I finish. All right, this was in the Grappling Industries Amsterdam. Guy shoots in straight from the start and I managed to catch him in an arming guillotine. Look, I fall to my side, I keep my chin tucked, so my chin is actually on his back. My foot is over his back so he can't roll out. And I keep the tight pressure, compressing his chin to his chest as I squeeze the guillotine. He tries to warm out, I stay tight. Look how uh, I'm balled up so I don't extend. I stay nice and tight on the guillotine. Now my opponent tries to flatten me out, but because I got that perfect compression, it's going to be very hard for him to get out, even standing up. And we get the tap. So let's take a look at that entry again. Straight from the start, my opponent shoots in. He tries to catch my leg, but I managed to guide him into my arms, setting up an arm in guillotine. So that's how I, can, uh, how I like to use the guillotine from a standing position. As soon as somebody shoots, you can use your guillotine to defend takedowns and to counter them into your own submissions. All right, next one we'll take a look at. This is at the same tournament. Um, I think either the round before, yeah, this was the round before. Uh, another French guy. And here I managed to sweep him and I got to the top position. Let's take a look. Straight away he comes in for an underhook and I dive over to catch an arm in guillotine. From here, if I'm correct, he locks me into a half guard. Yes, half butterfly, and there he locks in the half guard. Okay, this is a position I use a lot, especially when I'm passing to the right side, I like to go for the guillotine. And what I will do in this position is actually something I learned from my student Bart, who's coaching me right here in the corner. Uh, I call this the Bart. When somebody is defending the guillotine really well, you feel you can't finish it. You, you, he also keeps holding on to the half guard. There's a, a nice transition where you go from the guillotine into an underhook. So look what I will do with my left hand. Instead of... Um, committing to the guillotine too much, I switch it into an underhook here. I keep pummeling my legs as I squeeze the guillotine. I feel it's good defending and then... Here... He keeps defending really well. Keep a, a slight squeeze with my right hand, and now I pummel in for the underhook. He's pretty aware of it, so he did a he did a good job. But it's hard to defend both the guillotine and the underhook. Now I need to switch my guillotine, so I go from guillotine, turning it into a cross. Ace. That's the next step of this uh, of this process. So I try to find the right moment. I don't want to do this one. He's uh, he's winning the inside position with the leg, so I try to win that leg battle first. And now I think I will make that switch. Yes, there we go. I make a smooth transition into the top head and arm, and now you're in a very deep passing position. From here, he tries to get a deep half guard, but because of the cross face pressure, it's very hard. If you get a top head and arm like this in the, in the half guard, you need a very good half guard to, uh, to get out of there. So I can use my second leg here, palm on my foot free, and there I pass into a tight mount position. So let's take a look at that last part of the sequence again. I shoot in my underhook. That's step number one. And now I need to find the right moment to switch to the, the cross face. So if I keep the guillotine, it's going to be hard to go to mount. I slide my hand over his face, connecting my hands. Now my goal is to turn him away from me, exactly like this. He tries to use his hand under my leg, but because of that tight, tight cross face pressure, there's not a lot he can do. From here, pommel in the foot, and you get a mount position. Of course, when you go to the mount, very important that you shoot your knees up and you connect your feet to their legs. So that's how I like to use this guillotine from top. Now from bottom, we already looked at this, um, this sequence uh, in detail 
in a recent video, so I don't want to go into too much detail, but I want to focus a little bit more on the setup. In my guillotine system, again, if you want to learn more about this, um, it's in the description below. You can learn everything I know about the guillotine. Um, I like to finish guillotines from either close guard, from that uh, position we looked at, at the take, uh, from the takedown with the leg over the back or from the mount. And in this case, I look for the guillotine from the close guard. I get up, uh, almost like a hip bump sweep, but I keep my legs locked. He keeps a good pressure. If I get up and I try to force his head under my armpit and there, I managed to catch it. This is not an optimal position. I need to fall to my right side. And this guy's doing a, a very good job at defending. He keeps his shoulder heavy, his right shoulder heavy, and he does hand fighting with his left hand. So this is the correct defense to a guillotine. But it leaves you open to the triangle counter. As I pull my guillotine, he needs to get that strong pull. We talked about this before. The stronger you want to pull, the more your elbow needs to move into your hip. So that's what he does. Now, as his elbow gets closer to his hip, I will try to throw my leg over and move into the triangle. So again, he, he plays around with the hand a little bit. The moment I feel he's strongly pushing down to defend the guillotine, he needs to because I'm squeezing quite hard on the guillotine. He needs to pull my arm down. That's the moment my leg goes over. I think here I'm already starting to fish for it. Look how his elbow moves back to, to uh, exert a little bit more power on that arm. And now my leg swing open and I catch it. There we go, then we move into the triangle. Um, if you wanna learn more about this combination and how to finish that triangle, uh, definitely check out the, the other video. Get one of these corners, and I get the tap eventually with the triangle after he defended it quite well uh, as well. So there you go. Three ways to set up the guillotine from three very different positions. You can do it when you're both standing, somebody shoots in for a takedown, you can use the guillotine as a takedown counter or takedown defense. If you're playing guard, it's a, a great way to attack without taking too much risks. You can keep your guard closed, lock the guillotine and uh, set up a very legitimate threat from there. Even if somebody defends well, there are some nice combinations. In passing, the guillotine is another great option. Anytime somebody comes up for the underhook, you can dive in for your guillotine and uh, use that to either get the finish or creates uh, so much threat that you can switch it off into a guard pass. And again, this one I learned from, uh, from Bart. Um, he's really good at this one, he uses it uh, on me uh, because I also have a relatively good guillotine defense, but he can turn it into great positions. And that's what I did here as well. So instead of like, committing to the guillotine, even when somebody's defending well, I switch it up and I use it to pass his guard instead and I land in a very strong mount position. Again, if you want to learn more, check out my instructional. Uh, I teach all these combinations, uh, all these setups, and um, a lot more as well. So if you want to learn that, link is in the description below. If you like this video, leave a like, leave a comment, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, of course. And if there's any other moves or matches you would like to see me break down, leave them in the comments as well. Thanks a lot for watching and see you guys next time.